prayer in your cabin. Read those books in a blink. Oh yeah. Grab yourself a hot drink because you're watching how to train your Gavin. Yep, that's me. Hey guys, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Today I'm doing my final book haul of 2020 and these are all of the books that I hauled in December. A lot of these ones were sent to me either from publishers or they were gifts from friends. Yeah, there isn't that many that I bought myself as per usual. I do get a lot of free shit and honestly I'm so thankful for that. I'm hoping in 2021 to not have as much in my book hauls. I kind of just want to do a book haul once every couple of months if possible. So there are I think 43 books in this video. My man. I also want to give a little thank you to Cordy for sending me this mug for Christmas uh, as well as some other stuff and I'll get into one of them later on. But this is a Hocus Pocus mug. Oh look another glorious morning makes me sick and honestly this is going to be perfect every single morning because that's exactly what I think <laughs> until I've had my coffee of course. <sighs> Top tier present. So thanks so much, Cody. <laughs> I usually split this into the ones I've been gifted first, middle grade, young adult, and then adult, and then I go into the ones that I bought. It's a little bit of a mishmash today. I will keep you right, but I, I am starting off with all the middle grade, then the young adult, and then the adult, but it's gonna be a mishmash of what I bought myself and what has been sent to me. So let's get into it. The first one is A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. This is actually a proof copy of literally my one of my favorite children's books of all time. And this one was gifted to me by Adele. So Adele had received this one a couple of years back and she was unhauling it because she was moving. So she had to get rid of a lot of books and I didn't want this to get thrown away or anything like that. So I asked if I could have it and Adele was kind enough to give it to me so I can put it with my Pinch of Magic collection on top of my bookshelves. So I'm not actually going to say what this one is about. I must have mentioned it like 55 times in my videos in 2020. So yeah, <laughs> watch one of those if you want to know what this is about. But either way, definitely still one of my favourite middle grades of all time. Orion were very kind enough to send me The Strange World's Travel Agency, The Edge of the Ocean by L.D. Lipinski. This one is the sequel to The Strange World's Travel Agency and this one comes out on April 15th, 2021. So this is an R copy and I was that excited to get it that I actually read it as soon as I got it. I just said, you know what, let's fuck the rest of December and read what I wanted to read. So I ended up reading this one in like two days, I think, maybe less. But I was honestly so engrossed, I loved it. So The Strange World's Travel Agency, the first book is about Flick and she moves town and she comes across this travel agency that's quite run down and it's run by Jonathan. Inside there are suitcases and when you go into a suitcase it takes you to a whole other world. That is like a really Cliff Notes version of it but this one it follows the same characters. We have some new characters too who I really enjoy and there is a bit of an adventure on the ocean. So it is really really good. I absolutely love it. I mentioned this in my top 50 middle grades of 2020 so do check that video out and yeah I can't wait for this one to come out properly so I can own a final copy of it and I think you guys will love it too. Then I was sent The Ocean Squid Explorers Club by Alex Bell from Faber and Faber and this one is a proof copy as well. This one comes out on the 4th of February. Really excited to read it because I love the Polar Bear Explorers Club series and this one it follows a different character from the Polar Bear Explorers Club. I think this one is going to be the start of a new trilogy but it is set in that world and this one follows Ursula. Yeah Ursula's a submarine engineer and she really wants to be an explorer as well and become part of the Ocean Squid Explorers club. Again, it sounds phenomenal. Cannot wait to read it. So thank you so much for sending me a proof copy. It was a surprise. I didn't know I was getting it, but when I got it, I was like, oh, thank you so much. Faber also sent me Uki and the Swamp Spirit by Kieran Larwood. This is a final copy of it. This is a brand new book that's just come out. Uh, it's the fifth book in the Five Realm series, which I actually haven't started yet. I keep meaning to. And the first book is called What's it called? Like, I've got them all here. So The Legend of Popkin One Year is the first book. I really want to read the series though. I keep meaning to, but TBR Games just doesn't allow it or I just forget and uh, I'm kicking myself. I really am. This one's in hardback and I've got the rest of them in paperback. So I don't know what to do about this one really. But thank you so much for sending me it. <laughs> uh, the Five Ram series, I think it follows a warren of rabbits and there is this evil enemy on the outskirts or oh, I think it might demolish. Oh, let's have a look. Yeah the warren is attacked by the gorm which is a terrifying threat to rabbit kind. That's what the first book is about but I think it's just like a, a whole adventure in this forest 
and Swamp, as we say in the fifth book, but I can't wait to read it. I really am excited to read the series. Gubby Books were absolutely lovely and sent me four books. Had no idea they were sending me these, but Saving Winslow by Sharon Creech. I had never heard about this book before they sent me it, but apparently it's about Louis, who doesn't have the best of luck when it comes to nurturing small animals. And when his father brings home a sickly newborn baby donkey, he's determined to save him. So it sounds like a really heartwarming story and an absolute surprise as well. It's also illustrated by Sarah Horn, and I've seen these illustrations before. Absolutely beautiful. They also sent me a proof of Maggie Blue and the Dark World by Anna Goodall. This one comes out in February, and this one is about 12-year-old Maggie, who is isolated, courageous, and empathetic. She makes a few mistakes along the way, but above all, it's her ability to understand how other people feel that enables her to succeed dark, funny, gripping. It just sounds like it might be a bit of a character-driven uh, story. Sounds really good and looking forward to that. I also got this really bizarre, very thin book called Tsunami Girl by Julian Sedgwick and Chai Kutswada and it says here that it's part prose and part manga. So when I've looked through it, there is manga parts of it. Like like that, in with the prose, which I've never read anything that was part prose and part manga, that's actually really cool. But this one is about 15 year old Yuki Hara Jones and her beloved grandpa are caught in the 2011 Japan earthquake and tsunami and her life has changed forever. I, I just can't believe how thin it is though. Uh, but I actually really can't wait to read this one. It sounds really interesting. 42 pages long. So this one will be like a really easy, quick read. But I think it's also going to be really impactful. So I uh, thank you for sending me this. It was such a nice surprise. They also sent me a finished copy of The Silently Alarming Tale of the Whispering Wars by Jacqueline Moriarty. And I have the first book, which is something like The Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Metalstone or something like that. So they sent their final, final copy of this. I think witches and sirens invade the main character's town in this one. One. I don't really know what the first one's about either, so I, I need to read the first one. But thank you for saying, like, I needed a copy of it if I was going to get it because it's in hardback and it'll not be in hardback for much longer. So it was a really nice surprise that they sent it, so thank you so much. So Ashley from A Product Through Fiction sent me some Christmas presents, and I couldn't believe when I opened the box. Um, I mean, there was loads of other stuff in here as well, but she sent me two books, and I cannot believe what she did. But she kind of like crafted her own versions of these books. So here we have The House with Chicken Legs and The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson. These are the American hardbacks. And what she's done is she's like painted the cover and then like painted a silhouette of The House with Chicken Legs on the cover as well. She's also painted the back. Not just that, but she's also like done the page edges as well. So there's like a, a white and blue look to it. And Ashley's done this all herself. Like, I was speechless. I was speechless when I opened this. I was like, what? So yeah, these were the American hardbacks. This is the girl who speaks bear one. So there's a silhouette of the bear and some stars. And just like the other one, it's painted on the back with blue and white, like sprayed edges. And honestly, like, thank you so much, Ashley. Like, this is incredible. Like, your talents are just second to none. Seriously, you are underrated is the right way to say you are underrated. These are honestly now my prized possessions. So yeah, I got <laughs> and I love Sophie Anderson's books so much. So Ashley, you picked the best books that you could to do this to. Like I don't come. Okay. So thank you so much. Like that's just incredible. The lovely Steph Gibson sent me some books. I mentioned on Twitter because she had them and they were some of my anticipated January books. And she had them and I was like, oh my god, I'm so jealous. Like they're amazing. And she's like, oh, give me your address and I'll send you them. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so I was like, okay. But thank you so much, Steph. She sent me Delivery to the Lost City by PG Bell and A Vanishing of Griffins by S.A. Patrick. I mentioned both of these in my most anticipated 2021 middle grade releases from March to, no, from January to March. Delivery to the Lost City is the third and final book in the Train to Impossible Places series, which is about Susie, and she ends up joining this train that goes to all the different places. It can go under the sea, it can go to space, it can do all of these incredible things, and they deliver strange stuff to, like, witches and trolls and all of that kind of stuff. So this is the third and final book in that series. And then we have A Vanishing of Griffins, and I've been anticipating this one for just over two years now, and I love the first book, A Darkness of Dragons, which followed a piper, like a pied piper, and he plays a forbidden spell in this village, and he gets locked up for it in the same place where the pied piper of Hamlin 
is locked up. And the Pied Piper of Hamelin is, of course, the person who kidnapped all those children in that fairy tale. And it's just like such a great story. It's got dracogryphs, it's got cursed girls who have turned into rats, things like that. And honestly, I couldn't wait for the sequel. It got delayed for a bit, but it's finally here. And thank you so much, Steph, for sending me these two books. I, oh, I love them so much. <laughs> Chicken House were amazing and sent me Vice by License to Chill by Maz Evans. This one comes out in March. And not only did they send the book, they also sent me a mug, a Vice by mug. Look at this. <laughs> like it's got the the character on there as well it says Maz Evans by Spy License to Chill with some of the illustrations who is the illustrator because they're amazing illustrations by Jez Tuya and yeah that looks so cool and also it does have some hot chocolate to go with it as well so <laughs> thank you so much Chicken House but I believe this one is about a girl who wants to be a spy and her parents are too busy fighting or something and it allows loads of villains to start taking over something like that it sounds really cool and Maz Evans is a phenomenal funny writer she wrote the Who Let the Gods Out series and this one looks to be just as great. A huge thank you to Puffin for sending me a finished copy of Uma and the answer to absolutely everything. It does have these nice pink sprayed edges. And this one is about a girl who literally knows the answer to everything. Because she comes across this AI and it tells her the answer to everything. Uma has to confront a very sinister inventor or something like that. And it sounds like it's going to be a really funny adventure because Sam Copeland who wrote this and illustrations by Sarah Horn who I mentioned earlier. Sam Copeland also wrote Charlie Changes Into a Chicken. He's a really funny writer and yeah this one should be just as amazing and funny as that one. So yeah thank you so much Puffin for sending me this one. This one comes out at the end of January so I do really want to read it ASAP. A huge thank you to Elle McNichol for sending me a copy of A Kind of Spark that she personally signed. Now I love A Kind of Spark. It's one of my favourite books of 2020, middle grade or otherwise. But yeah it's signed by Elle in there. She also wrote a really nice note for me as well. So oh, like thank you so much L for sending me this. Like honestly you did not have to. But because of 2020 I haven't really had a chance to get very many signed books like properly signed. They've either been like a book plate or something like that. So it's really nice to get like a proper signed book. So thank you so much L. A kind of spark if you if you do not know which I'm surprised if you don't at this point. But it does follow Addy and she is a neurodivergent main protagonist. She is autistic and this is own voices as well so definitely own vices, disability rep all of the way. Addy does live in a very small Scottish village and she wants to make a memorial for the innocent women who lost their lives during the witch trials in her village hundreds of years before but people in the village don't listen to her because she is a young girl, she is autistic but she fights adversity, she is so amazing and this book is amazing so I'm not going to say anything else and spoiler for you but this is fantastic so please do pick it up. Bloomsbury sent me a copy of The Valley of Lost Secrets by Leslie Parr. This one is the current book of the month for Waterstones and this one is set in 1939 so Second World War. When Jimmy's evacuated to a small village in Wales it couldn't be more different from London. He finds a skull hidden in a tree and suddenly the valley is more frightening than the wall. So it sounds like a really good kind of mystery adventure set during World War II and I do love me a middle grade section in World War II so yeah this one looks to be another really great one so thank you so much Bloomsbury for sending me it. When I'll read all of these honestly I do not know because we're not even halfway through yet. Next I have Ramesa a fairy tale by Radia Hafiza and this one is coming out in April I believe let's have a double check yeah, the 1st of April 2021. This one apparently weaves together three fairy tales, Ramesa, Cinderella and Sipansara. And it's a humorous debut which will enchant and inspire the Rebel Girls generation. Ramesa has been trapped in a tower for forever and her high trap is her ticket to escape. So it is, yeah, Rapunzel retold and can't wait to read it. It's going to be another really good one. And thank you so much Macmillan for sending me a copy of it. I did get a proof for it on NetGalley but like I really wanted it physically. I read better when it's a physical book. So thank you. <laughs> a huge thank you to Finn who is a publicist for sending me The Abbey Mystery by Julia Golding. This is an advanced reading copy of the first book of the Jane Austen Investigate series which is a middle grade mystery series with Jane Austen as the main character. Really excited to read it. I saw this one just randomly online. I think um, it was Karen who I follow on Twitter. She did some book recommendations for Believeathon 2. She is an amazing teacher as well as an amazing middle grade reader and I will link her blog down below. But she had this on Twitter. She had reviewed it and she really enjoyed it. So I was like oh my god that looks amazing. So Fern was so nice enough to say hey do you want a copy? I'll send you one. I was like 
Yes. <laughs> this one comes out in April, so I still have a couple of months before I really, really have to read it. Uh, but this one does follow Jane Austen, who turns into a detective, and she tries to solve the mysterious happenings at Southmore Abbey. And yeah, it's all I really want to know about it. Going into it, I think it's going to be awesome, and I'd get it, Austen, awesome. No, that's not, that's not a joke. <laughs> she also sent me some Jane Austen tea with this as well, which it is somewhere. I, I can't remember where I put it, but it is definitely somewhere. And I will have some tea while I'm reading this. But yeah, this one, again, looks really good. Thank you so much, Finn, for sending me it. And then the last middle grade book that was sent to me was Front Desk by Kelly Yang. This was kindly sent to me by Knights of. And this one is coming out in January uh, this month in the United Kingdom. However, it's been out since 2018 in America. But this one does follow a young girl who works at her parents' motel and her parents help to hide immigrants. Uh, she really wants to be a writer. So our main protagonist is called Mia Tan. It goes through her life while working at this motel for her parents. I just think it's going to be amazing and I'll probably be able to explain it better when I've read it but yeah I'm really excited to read it. Thank you so much Nights Off for sending me it. So on to the middle grade books that I bought. I bought Another Twist in the Tale by Catherine Bruton. I did get sent an art copy of it way earlier in the year because this was supposed to come out in May and I read the art copy and I really really enjoyed it. This is like an Oliver Twist retelling and it goes through what would happen if Oliver Twist had a twin sister and the twin sister got separated from Oliver at birth and it goes through her kind of upbringing and how she ends up you know finding her feet in London. She ends up coming across like Fagin and the awful Dodger and you know Oliver Twist himself so it does have all those hallmark Oliver Twist characters in this. I really enjoyed it so I thought you know what I want to support the author I want to buy the finished copy and yeah I love I love doing that. I love getting sent arcs, but nothing makes me feel better than buying the finished product as well. So thank you so much. Why am I thanking you? <laughs> thank you, me, for buying this book. <laughs> I also bought Christmas Dinner of Souls by Ross Montgomery. I did an interview with Ross Montgomery on my channel a few months back for the Midnight Guardians. Uh, this one is set during Christmas time and it's a bit of more of a, a dark, twisted Christmas kind of book where a group of guests have to tell the scariest Christmas story that they can and it's just them telling stories I think but there is a prize at the end of it. Yeah they must compete to tell the most terrifying gruesome tale they know but honestly cannot wait to read it. Ross Montgomery is a fantastic writer. I also picked up Everdark by Abby Elphinstone. This one is a prequel to Rumble Star or uh, the very very start of the Unmapped Chronicle series but this one it did come out as a world book day book which I own but it got re-released because it is now dyslexia friendly so there is actually a dyslexia friendly font in this and the cream pages that helps dyslexic readers to read these books. Abby Elphinstone is dyslexic so that's why I absolutely love the fact that she is now trying to make her books accessible for dyslexic readers and I think it's going to be fantastic. I haven't read this one yet. I have read Rumble Star and Jungle Drop but this one I'm yeah I can't wait to read it. I think she also embellished the, the World Book Day book because this is so much bigger than the World Book Day book so yeah I think there's some kind of new stuff going on in this as well. I also picked up The Giant's Almanac by Andrew Zercher. This one really stuck out to me mainly because of the cover but also because it said he was raised on stories but nothing has prepared him for his own. I don't know why but it gives me Jack and the Beanstalk vibes. It says yeah that fits uh, is our main character and he's forced away from his home and he ends up in the centre of an elaborate and a dangerous game. So there is a race against time, there is a quest to recover the truth about himself, and there is a powerful secret society that could save him or destroy him. So it sounds like one of those really upper middle grade books that sounds a little bit dangerous but also like so good gives me a little bit of Orphans of the Tide vibes as well so I love Orphans of the Tide by Shiro Morito but this one yeah it looks upper middle grade it looks right up my street so that's why I picked it up. I also got Space Oddity by Christopher Edge. I mainly picked this one up because I read The Infinite Lives of Maisie Day and I really enjoyed that book it was just a little bit too short for my liking but it was really good and uh, Christopher Edge is a middle grade science fiction writer and I haven't read a lot of science fiction in middle grade. The only one I've really read apart from Macy Day was Orion Lost by Alistair Chisholm and it's one of my favourite books now. But this one says, you might think that this story is going to be an intergalactic adventure filled with UFOs, black holes, killer robots and some very foul smelling aliens. And you'd be right. So again, it's, it sounds really good. I'm trying to read more science fiction middle grade. There's not really that many out there. So this one looks to be like a really good option. Finally, I can stop talking about getting this series, but it is the final book in the Lewis Bonneville series, The Sign of the Sinister Sorcerer by John Belez and Brad Strickland. And the, yeah, this one's the 12th and final book. Piccadilly Press have been re-releasing these books ever since the movie came out with these beautiful covers. And because they're not really that easily accessible in the UK, but now they've made it accessible, they've made the entire series 
match. So this is the 12th book and I'm so glad that I can finish out the series. So I don't really want to explain the series again but it does follow a young boy who gets sent to live with his uncle who is a wizard and he lives next door to a witch and Lewis ends up coming into his own kinds of powers. So each book has been a different little adventure. They felt a little bit dated when I've been reading them but they're still really enjoyable. So looking forward to finishing out the series but I'm glad I have them all now. <laughs> because I love The Crooked Sixpence so much I did end up picking The Smoking Hourglass and The Frozen Telescope by Jennifer Bell. These are the second and third books in the Incominer series and honestly when I say I absolutely loved The Crooked Sixpence oh, it was one of the best middle grade monthly books that me and Jade picked and we read that for November. It was so so good and yeah these two I just knew that because I love the first one so much I will definitely read the entire trilogy. Jennifer Bell is an incredible writer by the way. She is up there as one of my favourite children's writers of all time. So yeah I'm so excited to own the entire set and honestly my Jennifer Bell collection is now thriving. <laughs> also picked up The Good Bear by Sarah Lean, illustrated by Fiona Woodcock. So this one follows Thea and she ends up going to Norway for the Christmas holidays and in this snowy landscape she ends up coming across a bear who is tired and hungry and I think this is going to be like a really great story, very frosty kind of story perfect for Paulathon. I mainly picked it up because, I mean, cover, but also the synopsis, it just sounds right up my street. So yeah, I mean, I can't really give you much more information than that because I haven't read it yet, but it is a really beautiful one. And the illustrations as well by Fiona Woodcock, absolutely beautiful. On my January TV also, you will have seen this one already, is A Thousand Questions by Sadia Faruqi. And this one is about a girl who is kind of She's spending her break in Pakistan and she doesn't really want to but she ends up meeting a friend there and it goes through their adventures while there and I've heard nothing but positive things about this book. I am so excited to read it. It is on my January TBR, thank God. So I will be able to tell you my thoughts about this very, very soon. So, ah, oh, gosh, yes, I can't wait to read it. <laughs> then I picked up The Toymaker's Apprentice by Sherry L. Smith. I actually picked this one up because I saw it in one of Desi's videos from Darlin' Desi. This one really stuck out to me because I am doing a Nutcracker reading vlog because I mean I will tell you more about it later about a book that I've been sent this month as well. But this one is about an apprentice whose father's kidnapped and he needs to go and find a mythical nut to save a cursed princess who has become a living doll of wood. A little bit Nutcracker retelling but I also heard it's a little bit Pinocchio-esque as well so excited to read it especially since I'm doing some Nutcracker reading this month. I have to say a huge thank you to Monica Palmer as well for sending me a gift card to use and I ended up buying two absolutely gorgeous books with it. So one of them was The Snow Queen and Other Winter Tales by Hans Christian Andersen and this one is like the Barnes and Noble like leather bound. It has like the really reflective silver spray edges but honestly like Snow Queen is one of my favourite fairy tales and I just knew I had to get something special with that gift card because it was from Monica so again thank you so much Monica. Not only did I get this one though but I got uh, the Nutcracker and other Christmas tales and this one has the version by Alexandra Dumas something like that but other like Christmas details as well and uh, this one took a while to come though but it is part of my Nutcracker reading vlog so I'm excited about that but yeah thank you so much to Monica for sending me that gift card these are the books I bought with it so oh, like thank you so much <laughs> now for the young adult books one that I was sent was Mina and the Undead by Amy McCaw and this one is like a gothic young adult horror novel all I know about this is that it's set in New Orleans in 1995 and I think this is like a vampire tale as well there's a lot of stuff about the gothic and the macabre in this. Honestly, so excited to read it. So thank you so much to Uckland Publishing uh, for sending me this book. I cannot wait to read it. I love me some YA horror and I think this one is going to be the best one I've read so far. So thank you so much. I also bought The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. It's not a direct sequel or anything to One of Us is Lying and the other Karen McManus books I've enjoyed However, I have found them a little bit predictable. I definitely predicted One of Us is Lying in the first two pages. But I did quite like Two Can Keep a Secret. So I'm hoping this one is the best Karen M. McManus book yet. So this one is about a rich family and four of the kids in this family get, I think, disowned. And they're given a letter each saying, you know what you did. And I don't know anything after that. But it has like, it says on the front, Secret Lies Inheritance. I think it's going to be a great family drama thriller kind of thing. So looking forward to giving this a read. Also has beautiful black spirit edges to match my other Karen M. McManus books. In my fairy loot box, I got Master of One by Jada Jones and Danny Bennett. This one I think follows a thief who is forced by a sorceress to recover hidden 
Fae Relics, something like that. <laughs> I do have a fairy loot unboxing video. It sounds really interesting, got beautiful red sparkly sprayed edges, and I have my fairy loot unboxing video, I will link it down below. But yeah, it looks like a really great young adult novel and looking forward to reading it again. <laughs> said that about every single book in this, but I, I don't know how to do book haul videos and explain them very well because I haven't read them yet. Anyway, the one that I got in Illumicrate, which was actually from September, but it's a whole story. I forgot I had it and I ended up just unboxing it <laughs> a few days ago. So I also got a Deadly Education by Naomi Novik in that Illumicrate box. And I think this one, it just follows a girl who is in this magical academy and she has these powers that can destroy everything. And it's all I really know about it. I've never read a Naomi Novik book before in my life, but quite interested in reading it. So let's see how we get on with it. So for the adult books now, one that I was sent to me, and honestly, it is the most gorgeous of proofs that I ever, ever received. And that is Midnight in Everwood by M.A. Kuznia. Now this is a hardback proof. It has honestly everything going for it. <laughs> it says on the back there, prepare to be enchanted. And uh, honestly, I this doesn't come out until October 2021. It comes out like ages away, but it already has this gorgeous proof. It has this ballerina on the cover. This is an adult Nutcracker retelling about a woman who her ballerina days are numbered because she's getting married off. However, a stranger moves in next door and he brings magic and mystery with him. He ends up constructing this elaborate set for her and something happens after that. I'm not sure what, but I will be reading this very soon because a book that I bought was The Nutcracker, the original one by A.T.A. Hoffman. And it's why I also used that gift card that Monica got me for The Nutcracker and Other Christmas Tales. Because yes, I'm reading the original Nutcracker, the retold version by Alexandra D Dumas person and Midnight Neverwood by Emmy because yeah I'm doing a reading vlog for these three cannot wait to get that out I'm so excited to read all of them I will leave a pre-order link for this in the description because it's gonna be so beautiful my love Cody sent me a gorgeous copy of the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde this is one of if not my favorite classics of all time yeah this one is about well Dorian Gray who he ends up getting a, a painting made of him but it turns out that there is some kind of curse because the painting ages, but Dorian doesn't. And it seems like there's something supernatural going on. It's fantastic. I love it. I love myself some Victorian classics. So honestly, thank you so much, Cody, for finding me this. It's got gorgeous gold sprayed edges or like gilded. I don't know what you call these. I don't think they're sprayed, but it is gold and I love it. Also, another love of my life, Becca sent me three books for Christmas. She, <laughs> she sent me Hothead by Damon Swade. I mean, look at that cover. This is definitely, I think it's a gay, sexy romance. I did have this on my wish list, like back in June. My wish list has been closed since May, by the way. This one, I, I remember having it on my wish list, and I think it was because my friend Paige was looking for really sexy gay romances because I was wanting to do a gay, sexy romance vlog. And I don't think, I don't think Becca's read this one, but she must have saw it on my wish list and thought, hmm. Gavin's getting that. Uh, but it says, since 9-11, Brooklyn firefighter Griff Moore has wrestled with impossible feelings for his best friend and partner, Ladder 181, Dante. Unfortunately, Dante is strictly a ladies' man, and the FDNY isn't exactly gay-friendly. For 10 years, Griff has hidden his heart in a half-life of public heroes and private anguish. So I think there's going to be some kind of unrequited love that might end up becoming something. Like, just because he looks like a ladies' man doesn't mean he is one. You know, he could be bisexual. You just can't assume anyone's uh, sexuality, please. But I'm honestly so excited to read it. Like, honestly, 2021 is the year I'm going to pick up more romance. And if I'm going to pick one up, it's definitely going to be this one. <laughs> oh, that cover. Oh, that cover. She also sent me Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. I remember Becca reading this earlier in 2020, but I can't really remember what this one's about. I think it's some kind of thriller romance. It's got a really long synopsis, and honestly, I cannot be bothered to read it and summarise it for you. So I'm just going to say I think it's a thriller romance. And I think there's an age gap as well, because one of the main characters is 19, and the... The, the main man is 38, I think. And her boyfriend's father, oh my God. Okay, um, so I think it's gonna be really interesting and I think it's self-published, so that's awesome. Let's read more indie published authors in 2021. But she also sent me Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton. And this is the one that I really, really wanted. Like I made so many hints to Becca that I really wanted this one. <laughs> Both Becca and Ashley loved this. So I was like, you know what? I love jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah, I'm, I follow those two around like a lost puppy, I swear. Fortuna Sworn is the last of her kind. Her brother disappeared two years ago, even here with no family or species to speak of. 
She hides among humans, spending her days working at a bar and her nights searching for him. The bleak pattern goes on and on until she catches the eye of a powerful fairy. He makes no attempt to hide that he desires Fortuna, and in exchange for her, he offers something irresistible. So Fortuna reluctantly leaves her safe existence behind to step back into a world of creatures and power. It soon becomes clear that she may not have bargained with her heart, but her very life. I will be doing, like, a really sexy romance reading vlog. I was going to do it this month, but then my TBR just went a bit too crazy. And now I want to read it in time for Valentine's Day. So I'll have, like, a sexy romance reading vlog for Valentine's Day now. Definitely going to include this. I might include Hot Head as well, because I think that might be really sexy. But yeah, I'm really excited to, to read that one. So thank you so much, Becca, for sending me those books. And finally, the only adult book that I bought in December was Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell. And this one, it is set during Shakespearean times. It's just one book of the year. And I think it's about a plague that wipes out a lot of London. And the main character, I think, loses one of his children. And I think the main character might be Shakespeare or something. There is definitely something about a playwright. Yeah, it is. It's a novel inspired by the son of a famous playwright, who I assume is Shakespeare. Story of the bond between twins and of a marriage pushed to the brink by grief. So this is on my January TBR as well. I am reading more literary and adult fiction in 2021. So that was the final book haul of 2020. And I... I'm telling you now, I really hope there isn't as many books that I'm getting in 2021. I'm going to try and say no to things more. I'm terrible for saying yes at everything. So I'm going to try and say no to some things. And my wish list is remaining closed for the foreseeable future as well. Thank you so much to everyone who sent me something though. Like, I really do appreciate it. You guys are just honestly the absolute best. Thank you so much. Thank you to the publishers who sent me stuff as well. And I honestly didn't even have to buy much this month at all, uh, which is always a plus. So thank you so much for watching. I I really appreciate it. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!